us today for our last presentation of the day. Uh, if you are just joining us, welcome to the Barrie County Science Festival 2020 Reimagine STEAM. Uh, my name is Ellen Holsty. I am the Community Program Manager at Pierce Cedar Creek Institute. So our last presentation of the day is Hatchling Happenings, Taking Care of the, ba the Institute, excuse me, Baby Box Turtles, presented by John Ball Zoo. And welcome John Ball Zoo today. Today we have Laura from John Ball Zoo and I believe a lot of our baby box turtles, right Laura? Yes, hello everyone. I hope you can hear me. We are here today at John Ball Zoo with our baby Eastern box turtles. This is a really awesome partnership we have with both Pierce Cedar Creek Institute and some great biologists scientists, and students at Grand Valley State University. So this is something we've been partnering for the last couple of years to help um, give these guys uh, a head start on life. So what we do is Pierce Cedar Creek, all of these guys were hatched at Pierce Cedar Creek. In the spring when eggs are laid, we actually have students and biologists that go around and they put nest protection over the nests of these Eastern box turtles. This process is really important because Eastern box turtles, although they're found in a lot of the Eastern part of the United States, all the way from Maine to Florida, sometimes as far as West as Texas, they are not endangered or threatened but unfortunately, they are considered what we call a species of special concern. So that means they're not endangered, but if we don't keep a very close eye on these guys, they could very easily become endangered. One of the best, um, one of the biggest threats to these little guys um, are, are predation upon those nests. So animals like raccoons and possums when they're just searching for a meal, uh, a really nice nutritious meal for them would be some a big nest of eggs. We obviously don't want that to happen while we're trying to help these little guys survive. So that's why um, our researchers in Pierce Cedar Creek go and cover those nests. That helps us monitor them throughout the season, check on the eggs, make sure they're doing well, um, and then, in the fall, those eggs start to hatch into little baby turtles. And they're very cute. They're teeny, teeny, tiny when, I, when they come to us. So um, these are from different nests, different um, mama box turtles laid uh, different groups of these. Our first ones started hatching about um, the last week of August. That's actually a little bit early, um, but sometimes when we have uh, wet, warm weather or stuff that starts to feel like fall, we can be a little bit early. And then our, down to our very last turtles um, were hatched the middle of October. So they're about, some of them are, you know, born within kind of six weeks, roughly. Um, then they come to John Ball Zoo. And they're often, when they first arrive, just about six grams, six to seven grams. A gram is roughly the size of a paper clip. So these guys are teeny, teeny, tiny when they come, which is really exciting. So when they come, what a lot of people don't know is box turtles or really anything that um, develops inside of an egg has a belly button, just like you or I. So they have the yolk of the egg, just like if you were to get an egg from the store, that orange center of the egg, that is what actually helps a developing embryo have nutrients inside the egg while they develop. Sometimes when they're born, they actually are not going to eat for the first maybe five to seven days um, because they're still internalizing that yolk. For our baby box turtles, that is actually on the bottom side of their shell. And when they come to us, there might be a little bit left 
of, of just a sack of yolk that will feed them for the first few weeks of their life and still give them that nutrients to get up and walk around. So these guys were found hatched um, in those protected um, caging so that raccoons and possums and other predators couldn't get at them. They were collected, brought here, and then they start their life here at John Ball Zoo. So every day, um, each turtle will get cleaned. We take them out. We weigh them once a week so we can monitor that they're growing appropriately and gaining weight. And if they need a little extra help, that helps us know um, based on their weight if they're progressing like they should. So Laura, do out. each of those boxes contain one turtle each? Yes. So and actually, we have more boxes that you can't see. This year, we have 20 turtles. So we are very, very, very lucky to have so many turtles this year. In each box, we have moss. This is a warm uh, moss that you would find outside. This helps our baby box turtles learn to practice digging so to hide from predators. It also keeps them hydrated because it's very moist. We don't want them to get dehydrated at all. And then they have a little bit of water because surprisingly, eastern box turtles, although they are a land turtle, they can swim. And these little guys actually swim to get some of their food. So we know they're hard to see. They're really little. Since coming here, um, a lot of them have gained probably close to 10 grams. So they've already gone on and doubled their weight just by being here the last six weeks or so. Um, we feed them lots of different things. We try and give them a balanced diet and help them learn what they should be eating in the wild. So we feed them earthworms a couple days a week. We, have, um, we get really tiny earthworms because they're really tiny. Um, they get a special Reptamin pellet that is especially formulated, kind of like a power bar a pellet that helps them grow and get all the vitamins and nutrients they need. We also feed them a salad because, as adult turtles, um, they'll eat a lot of vegetation, mushrooms, fruit, kind of a lot of that vegetation they would find out at Pierce Cedar Creek. We want to get them used to eating salad too. When they're really tiny like this, they're actually more carnivorous. So we start with those earthworms, maybe some crickets sometimes, and those specialized baby turtle pellets. So now with head starting, what's different than if they were in the wild is they are here with these specialized lights that keep our turtles nice and warm. They have a basking spot of about 90 to 95 degrees, and that prevents them from hibernating like other turtles in the wild would be doing right now. If they were outside, it would be getting very cold for them, so they would have to dig under the substrate, the dirt, the leaves, and just hunker down for winter. But for us, we keep them at that constant temperature and help them thermoregulate so they can cool off by going outside of the light or in the water, and then they can come bask under that hot spot. That helps them digest and grow and keep those, um, those bodily functions all, all tip top and in shape. So because we keep them so warm, we can feed them all winter long. Out in the wild, they'd be hunkered down and they actually might not eat till spring. So uh, that helps us get these guys um, to about the size of almost a three-year-old turtle by the time they are released in May. When we go to release them, we put a teeny tiny little tracker on them. If you guys have been following Pierce Cedar Creek for a while, you might have seen some videos in the spring of us putting those tiny little trackers on them and then going out, letting them go, and checking on them every few days or every few weeks to see how they're doing. So 
Um, that really helps us understand if head starting is a way that really helps these turtles. Because unfortunately, um, there's not a ton of data on these guys to find out if that head starting method uh, works well. Um, but so far, we released, I believe, nine or 10 turtles last spring, and all of them with their trackers that, that still have their trackers, some of them were able to dislodge them right off their shell. So we're not quite sure what happened to those. We found the tracker, no turtle. Um, but everybody else seems to be doing really well and acting just like a box turtle should. Laura, so, yeah. a question for you. How large mm -hmm. do they need to be before, they can before you can tell if they're boys or girls? Whoa, that is a good question. So box turtles have this really cool thing called sexual dimorphism. That's really just a fancy way to say, um, we can tell just by looking at them if it's a boy or a girl. Think of like a snake you might see in the yard. That's kind of hard to tell if it's a boy or a girl, right? There's nothing externally that might give indication that it's a boy or a girl. However, as adults, the boys actually have a red eye while the girls have kind of more of a yellowish brown eye. Now, our little guys from last year, when we let them go at about 10 months old, um, just one or two of them were starting to have that little red tinge. So we believed those ones were going to grow up to be male. Now, in the wild, that process would take a lot longer if they weren't head started. So maybe four or five years, we might be able to tell if it is a boy or a girl if it was a that's a very good question. Sometimes people often wonder about the hinge that's on uh, the plastron or the underside of their shell. Um, that was something that we, when we let last year's turtles go, we were seeing in all of those turtles at about nine to 10 months of age. But again, those were head started turtles. So those turtles were more like a three to four year old turtle. Um, right now, at this stage, their shell is actually kind of squishy. Um, that also leaves them vulnerable to be predated upon. Um, as time goes on, as long as they process um, calcium and all the things they should, their shells will get nice and hard. And they'll also start to develop a really cool pattern on their shell. So right now, you saw that turtle that I brought out. I know he was kind of hard to see in this lighting, um, but mostly they are kind of a brownish black color. They are Can we beautiful. see another shell, Laura, and see yeah. what that looks like? Let's grab one with more of a pattern. This might be hard to see. So if you look at these guys, see how he is a um, little bit, he's kind of a blackish brown color. And it looks like you guys might be able to see the pattern. Do you see that yellow pattern on the shell? We do, if you bring it up just a little bit higher, we'll be able to see it better. There you there go. go. There we go, he's very cute. He is doing exactly what a box turtle should. In the wild, if something was holding on to you, it probably would be a predator. So you can see he's running his little legs trying to get away. That is a good thing. We want him to continue to do that, to learn how to do that so that he has a greater chance of survival when he goes back out in the wild. This little guy I grabbed is actually our youngest turtle. So I wanna flip him over and show you the underside of his shell. Now remember when we were talking about that yolk internalization, that is actually right here. Do you see that spot that's almost like a little bit here? His belly button is. That was where the yolk of his shell of that he was eating when he was in the egg um, got internalized and sealed up. So that will all harden over as he gets bigger, but that's exactly where his yolk was. Which is pretty cool, huh? So this year we have 20 turtles. Um, that's very exciting. Now, these are not all of the baby turtles from Pierce Cedar Creek. 
all of these little guys have brothers and sisters that hatched at the same time. And we decided to take about half of them um, just so that maybe in the future, if we find some wild turtles, we have some data to compare it to. It'll hard, be hard to tell when those other turtles that aren't here hatched or what year they're from or what nest they're from. But it should at some point give us some data if we can find some wild turtles. It was really exciting this year after our little guys were hatched. Um, some awesome students and researchers at Pierce Cedar Creek did find a wild turtle and it was um, believed to be about three to four years old. It was actually much smaller than our hatchling turtles that were less than a year old. Laura, do you know how old they will be uh, or they need to be before, as an adult, before they can produce eggs? So there's, there's a saying sometimes in the turtle world that um, it's not only important that turtles can live a long time, but it's important that they do live a long time because they don't reach sexual maturity for many, many years. I'm not exactly sure uh, how old they would need to be before they would start laying eggs. Um, but it's oftentimes, you know, my guess is about 10 to 12 years. So it's really important that these guys have that head start um, to be able to get to that big size and be safe so that they continue on their species. That's part of the data um, that we're looking for by doing this Head Starting program. We don't know if our turtles, by getting this Head Start in life, if they will um, maybe reach sexual maturity and be able to have babies faster than other wild turtles. Laura, that brings up another good question that we have from Facebook. Allison asks, uh, do they get released at other places or are there any plans to spread them out in the future? I know these all came from peers, so I'm pretty sure we want to release them back at the Institute, um, but I don't know if you have, if there are other plans in the works. So here at John Ball Zoo, this is not our first head starting program. We have also done this um, with Michigan wood turtles, um, which are also species of special concern in Michigan. And so those go to another place in Michigan. These guys, there's actually some evidence um, and research that suggests that box turtles live in a territory of about 250 square yards. That's not very big, you know, that's a couple of football fields. So they become very used to their surroundings and they kind of, as long as they have everything they need, they stay pretty close to where they hatched. So, these guys will be returned strictly to Pierce Cedar Creek. I don't know if we would have plans in the future to go other places if we needed to repopulate another population that maybe isn't doing as well as the Pierce Cedar Creek one. Um, but these guys were kind of put on, I think they were calling it the sand prairie. We put them there because that was where some of the nests were and also where we, they were seeing a lot of adult turtles. So we knew that that was good habitat for these little babies that would help them survive. Yeah, the Sand Prairie, if you are aware of the Institute, is one of our most southern uh, parts of our property. And so that's where most of our nests are found. Not all, but most of the nests are found and most of the baby box turtles. Yeah, it's very exciting. Do you guys have any other questions about these little guys? We currently don't have any other questions on Facebook, but would it be possible to see another pattern of the shell pattern on another turtle to compare? Absolutely. So it's very interesting. My theory is that this pattern is mostly genetically um, determined because Sometimes we have, we have nests with brothers and sisters. So you see this little guy here, see how he has barely any pattern at all. It's very faint right now. He will become more yellow as time goes on. But right now he's almost entirely black. Now if we compare him to our little friend here, 
you can see that they're very different in coloration. Now, I'm gonna get our oldest turtle and one of our youngest, smaller turtles so that you guys can see how much they actually grow in just those six weeks. Laura, really while you're good. doing that, oops, there was a question yeah. that came in through Facebook. Uh, Sarah asks, how much will the turtles weigh this spring and how much did they weigh when they first hatched? So that difference. Yeah, that is a very good question. When they come to us, they're about six to seven grams. And um, last year, if I'm remembering correctly, we hit almost that 60 to 80 grams sometimes 10 times the size that they were when they arrived. So this turtle here was hatched on August 30th. It's very important for us to keep these turtles um, separated and so we can tell them apart. Um, so that we can track their growth uh, while they're here at John Ball Zoo. So let me grab one of our much younger turtles. So this turtle here, again, I will show you, this is the turtle that was hatched on August 30th. Right, so that makes him almost two months old. This little guy, you can see the difference. See how much smaller he is? He was born September 29th. So that was one month after this little guy. So look at how much they grow in even just a month of life. Oop, and he just peed. That's a little bit of a defense mechanism too. So he just got my computer a little stinker. But you can see just the difference one month can make. They really do grow very rapidly. We want to make sure that that's an appropriate growth rate. So we record that. Um, and then we can give turtles that might need a little boost, a little more food. Um, and then if, if they're kind of falling behind that expected growth rate. So pretty cool, isn't it? I can't believe that much in one month. Now, sometimes we have turtles that don't do as well as other turtles, um, but usually with just a little bit extra TLC monitoring, maybe a little bit extra food, we usually um, do quite well. And over the years, we have close to 100% success rate on all of our uh, turtle head starting programs. So that's really exciting because in the wild, they actually have a pretty high mortality rate um, as little tiny guys. That's so amazing, these, Laura. Yes, we're going to put these guys back so we don't get them confused so that we can monitor their weight appropriately as time goes on. Well, you put those back. Uh, probably our last question for the day, how big do these guys get in the end? So we saw how small they have, they are when they've hatched and even after a month or two, but how big do we expect our eastern box turtles to get once they are fully grown? Yes, so I don't know by gram weight, um, but they're gonna get pretty big. So I would compare them to about the size of a grapefruit. So not totally round like a grapefruit, but if you were to cut a grapefruit in half, um, that's kind of the size and shape of an adult box turtle. That's a very good question. So we're hoping that someday all these guys will be able to get that big and help their species continue in the wild. Well, thank you so, so much, Laura. I learned a lot and I'm so happy to see our baby box turtles and hear that they are doing very, very well. Thank you so much to you. Thank you guys for tuning in. We really appreciate you visiting us here at John Ball Zoo. And we appreciate you joining us today. Thank you, Laura, and thank you, John Ball Zoo. Yes, have a good one, guys.